You may remember my guest as DJ Tanner's boyfriend, Viper. So does that mean he'll be coming to Fuller House in the second season? We'll talk to him about that. Also, he has movies coming out, written, acting, and he's a frozen yogurt mogul. Look at us next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, you're going to take me home tonight. Oh, right. down beside that red firelight. Oh, Love some queen. Oh, this is so... That's right, everybody. And welcome to another edition of Spotlight On here on AfterBuzz TV and AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm your host, James Lodge Jr. You can follow us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. You can find, just go to AfterBuzz TV, look under the Spotlight On button, and all these interviews are on. I do a lot of them, and this one will be on there, too. So you want to go there and check that out. Um, and if you want to continue the conversation or talk to me, I'm James Lodge Jr. at all social media platforms. It's really simple. My guest was a musician on the show that he played years ago, some little show called Full House. He played one of DJ Tanner's boyfriends, Viper, who really loved her. Like, he really did love her. We're going to talk about that. How you feel about that? He also has a movie called Exodus to, Exodus to Shanghai coming out soon. And a couple other films I saw you have where you're working on and yeah. are coming out also. And you're also the proud owner of several Menchies, which is a very prop, a popular uh, frozen yogurt brand here in, in Los Angeles. A lot of celebrities go to Menchies. And I've been to the one, he owns one in Downey, California, which I've been to that one several times. Ladies and gentlemen, David Lipper. Woo! Woo! The crowd's going crazy. Everybody down. 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 Keep down. Everybody keep down. Everybody down. Hi, David. Hi. Welcome. Good to be here. I really like you because you picked a good a good group. I loved Queen. I, may, may Freddie Mercury rest in peace. You remember when this album came out? Not to date myself, which I just did. Yes. But it was a whole slew of naked yes. women on, on bicycles. Yes. Yeah. My friend had it on his bathroom wall for so long. So I used to go pee. And I just it like, came with a poster. It was a huge poster. Yes. And I just out. I just I would just like look over at every time I went to his bathroom. I just think that's just one of the best things. Yeah. They're just one of the best groups out there. So love Queen. good choice. Good choice Thank in music. You. I just turned 47 recently, so I'm a little old Stop myself. It. A few weeks ago, so I, I think I, I understand the age thing. I will not be saying my birthday. Yeah, you don't have to say That's it. That's just... You're okay. I'm just saying for me, because I'm not trying to be an actor or anything, so... <laughs> I, I, I can be here 90 years old in front of a microphone, right? I don't think we can get away with it anymore anyway, because everything's on the web. <laughs> <laughs> this cloud and the web, and it's Because your like actual it. birthday is... Not you. Don't say that. Yeah. But <clears throat> so anyway, so okay, we're gonna get okay. There's so much to talk to you. Like I mentioned, like three major parts of your life right now, and so we're gonna get the one thing out of the way because the fans are gonna want to know. Yep. First of all, let's show a picture of you from back in the day. I love the hair. That is a head full of hair. I just wish I could grow it like that, but I can't. <laughs> is that where how hair changes when you get old? It like it really does. Doesn't do that anymore. I tried. You know, the funny thing is, I tried growing it up until today. I just, I actually just cut really? it. And it just does this thing. Uh, it goes like out here, thin here. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Anymore. I mean, that hair. I mean, in all in all seriousness, actually, it's beautiful. But it's like big, full. It's like big, nice, thick head of hair. Now, is your was your hair naturally like kind of wavy, curly? Yeah. It, when it gets long, the Jufro happens. Yeah, we that's, like that. That's what happens. Oh, it yeah. gets long and and curly. And thick. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh my god. It definitely was thick. Early. And so you were on what four or five episodes, I believe. Yeah. 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 We yeah. shot we shot four episodes, um, plus a, an extra little thing of a jiggy. Yes. Um, <laughs> we had a thing with jiggy. I love it. Yeah, we had to shoot like a, an extra shoot with the twins. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. But uh, it was it was a very impactful four yeah. episodes, yeah. you know, because it was the last season and because she'd gone through some boyfriends, I guess that didn't really yeah. work or or catch on for too long on the yeah. show, and for some reason this character um, hit home. For, for people who love the show, so it, it turned into a much bigger thing than I thought it was going to be. I think part of it, because I did watch the show with my with my kids, I did ever watch the show, and I think part of it was because you're also in Jesse's band. Right. That so was, was a huge part of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we would we would do songs every episode, so we'd have the band do songs, and then, of course, they allowed me to write my own songs. Wow. Um, and play the, the acoustic guitar stuff yeah. that you see, that's yeah. usually me playing live. Oh, wow. Um, stuff that I wrote, stuff wow. that I'm singing live. At the taping, um, the stuff with the band mm -hmm. that would be lip synced um, okay. to a pre recorded stuff that Stamos would probably do in yeah. the studio with his guys. Yeah. Um, and Stamos, I gotta say, was amazing because 
Um, he really had the control over the whole music of the show. Okay. Um, and when I came on the show, he basically said, you know what? You're going to make some good money on these royalties. Okay. You, you write this. You do this. And, and go with it. And that was really cool because at the time, you know, I was still somewhat of a struggling actor. Um, so every penny meant a lot to me. Um, and John was really great. That's really good. That's good yeah. to hear that. We're going to show a small clip of you on Full House. Hello? Deej, I could beat around the bush. I could stall. I could hem and haw. You could just say it. Okay. I think things between us are moving too fast. You probably feel the same way. Like, uh, you need a little room to breathe. I was breathing fine until you started talking like this. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, one day we meet, and the next thing you know, boom, we're, we're a couple. So, what are you saying? Boom, we're breaking up? I guess I am. I don't understand. I thought everything was going well, great. It, it's not you. It's it's me. Okay. I just uh, I need a little space. I'm sorry, Teach. I gotta go. <laughs> <They're gonna laughs> <laughs> DJ. So that's you singing, and that's your song. Is there okay. anything that I could say? To change your mind. Yeah, we're actually playing live Let there. Wow. Because I'm just sitting here. <laughs> wasting away every day living without you. That's great. Oh, Viper. Oh, Deej, I miss you so much. I missed you too. There you go. So I went, I had to show, because, you know, that also, you had the tattoo and everything. You were like the bad boy, kind of, but not really a right. bad boy. Um, for Full House, I was a bad boy. Yeah, for, for Full House. <laughs> like, I had Little Jack, I was telling him I had Little Jack just like that back in the day. Um, I mean, why didn't you go into music more as a profession, or was it more like a hobby for you? It's an excellent question. I don't have a good answer for you. Okay. Um, okay. There is a CD on my website. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Okay. DavidLipper.com. Awful plug. Um, no, there's great plug. Oh, please, self-promotion. <laughs> please, do it. Uh, you know, music was a huge part of my life, uh, especially in college where yeah. I got a, a degree in musical theater. Wow. Uh, so I was a musical theater guy. I was that guy. Oh, my God. I, well, I, was, I was that freak that played hockey <laughs> and a did musicals. And music. I, love, so, I love it. I love you know, it. Outside both, the box. Both sides made yeah. fun of me. Yeah, you know, the theater people made fun of me for being the jock, and the jocks made fun of me for wearing yellow tights and chorus line. <laughs> One singular sensation. Yeah, jazz hands. That's that's um, right. So yeah, that was that was my whole life up until I came to L.A. And then at some point, I I made a concerted decision that I was going to go where the money was. Um, oh, which okay. Was, okay. Which was uh, I thought I'm an okay singer. I thought I'm an okay musician, but I'm a really good actor. Okay. That was kind of a decision I had to make. Yeah, I, I mean, I say it's where the money was, but that was—that's yeah. not re really what it was. It yeah. was I just thought I was a better actor. Um, you know, especially when musicals, you've got to act, sing, yeah. and dance. Yeah. You know, I got to college, and they're like, "You're in chorus line." I'm like, "Great. Have you danced before?" No. <laughs> Do you she have any into a room, and uh, yeah, any ballet training. No. Oh, funny. So, yeah, so I had to learn quickly in college, and I did. Um, I worked really, really hard in college to learn yeah. how to dance and do all that, but uh, ultimately I had to make that decision that I was probably geared towards sitcoms, um, and that's where I kind of morphed into in the 90s, yeah. not just with Full House, but the Martin Short show, right. uh, which was a great show. And Martin I, I Short's the bomb, first uh, of he's all. He's the best. It's about, it's about anybody who, you want to see somebody be a professional guest on talk shows, he is. He he's, gets it. I mean, he's just so talented. It's oh. it's like, and and it wasn't even just him. It's like Jan Hooks was, oh, in, hello, was on the show. One, yes. Andrea Martin was oh, on the show. Another one. Yes, right. <laughs> and legends. Brian Doyle Murray, Bill Murray's yes. brother, and this like, and then all these people would just pop in every week. And Eugene <laughs> Levy was directing, oh, and Eugene, it, it was yes. just like all these comedy heroes of mine yeah. growing up. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, I'm on a show with them. And Isn't that I'm amazing. Like, now I've hit it, yeah. and they're like, "You're canceled." 
Like, <laughs> it didn't last. I know it didn't. I, I watched three the show. Ep- it didn't three last. Three episodes. And yeah, like, it didn't last. I'm like, weren't we picked up for 13? They're like, yeah. But only Mar- Martin Short has a pair play for 13. You're unemployed. Yeah. So so that yes. uh, didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Um, but that you know, that's how the, the 90s really happened for me. So there was that. Um, what a lot of people may not know but you can find it on YouTube. It's all there, folks. Trust me, it's all there. Is I did a show called Reality Check. Yes. Um, that Kaufman, Bright, Crane created at the same time they created Friends. So they had two pilots. Pilots being the first uh, episode yes. of a new show that they want to try. It was Friends and Reality Check. My co-stars were uh, a very young Kaylee Coco. Ah, who's now quite, yes. Quite famous on he, the Big Yeah, Bang some little show called Big Bang Theory. She yes. played my little sister. Um my best friend was played by Giovanni Ribisi. Another young, you know, kind of actor who's been around a while. Like the yes. biggest movie of all time, yes, Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then uh, only a two-time Oscar winner, Hilary Swank, yes, played right. my other best friend. <laughs> and my girlfriend was played by Tiffany Amber Thiessen. So uh, it was just a monster cast. It was yeah. the best writers in the business. Yeah. And I remember some, we were on the schedule and some genius at Fox at the time decided since they had gotten the rights to football that summer that they were going to have a family sports themed show to keep that football audience because uh, now they're they're a real network and uh, yeah, and that so was the thinking yeah. uh, they bumped us off and I'll never forget some of the executives um, I'd met that when I tested for pilot the next season there yeah. they said uh, we made a huge mistake oh wow you know, because Friends became the biggest yeah, hit right. ever, yeah, right. and this was their other show. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, that cast could never be reassembled. And, no, of you know, not. Hillary became a megastar. Yeah. And she won Nile Twin O, and then went on to her movies. It's it, 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 it went on to her other stuff. Everybody went to other stuff. They obviously did other stuff. Everybody did very well, but um, yeah. but yeah, but it was a lot of fun. So that's actually uh, it's called Reality Check. It's uh, that pilot is out there. Oh, on, I got to check it out now. Yeah, on uh, on YouTube. And um, and so that was it. You know, the '90s were all about sitcoms, and then something happened. You know, you rape one girl in one TV movie, <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's like uh, NBC has an offer for you for a uh, for the lead in a movie. He's a killer uh, who kills the girl that he cheats on his girlfriend with. It's called the Texas Cadet Murders. Oh yeah, that. oh yeah. And, you know, because I had raped Tiffany Amber Thiessen, funny enough, uh, good thing we knew each other from this pilot. <laughs> and the first scene up, the first scene up, yes. I get to Texas, I get off the plane, I go to wardrobe, get to the set, and it's, David, do you know Tiffany? I'm like, yeah, we, you know, she was my girlfriend and my pilot. Oh, great. You're going to rape her in this scene. All righty. Good to see you. Great to see you again, girl. Great. And yes. action. Ten. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what a lot of people may not know okay. is when we shot that movie, pretty sure she just had her boobs done right before that. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. And yes. I think the bra was a little tight, and when I ripped the shirt off, I guess there was a front clip on the bra, oh and it just went boop. And, you know, oh. it was a tight shot on Tiffany's head, so she's going like this, no, 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 yeah. and I'm like this. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And she's like, go, go, why aren't you doing anything? I'm like... You know, and yeah. they, they weren't even seeing it because they, oh. they were tight on her face, and then all of a sudden somebody saw it, and they're like, "Cut!" Cut. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, "Well, cut." You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Literally. Um, oh my God. And uh, yeah, funny. so that was that was a funny little moment with Tiffany on uh, on uh, she fought alone was the name of that movie. That actually sounds familiar. I think I probably with saw it. Brian Austin Green uh, was also in that, and they were a couple at the time. Tiffany yes, they were. They were together for a while. Yeah. I remember that. But I'm not. But I'm sitting here picturing you now that I'm that I'm seeing you. I've seen you singing mm-hmm. stuff. I'm, I can see you doing a a musical theater of some sorts yeah you know with I, heavy acting but just like musical parts um you know i did a production of into the woods in uh, <coughs> oh in i Boston, love that one i love into the woods. and i'm really kind of bummed i didn't get a shot at uh at the feature yeah uh i, I played rapunzel's prince mm. in a in a boston production okay. it was amazing it's a great piece it's you know one of my favorite shows yeah, and um you know, i met james lapine funny enough he came he was actually one of those inspiring guys that came to my show and came backstage and for those who don't know James Lapine wrote the book to yeah. Into the Woods that right. Stephen Sondheim wrote the music Yes. Um, and you know he found me backstage and he's like where's David Lipper and he's like you you need to stick with this you're gonna be somebody see you know and, and for and the, you know a kid who's in, in college in Boston 
and I have to say it was it was a phenomenal musical theater program at Emerson, and this was a oh, Emerson, yeah, top yeah. level production, about a hundred thousand dollar budget, I think. Wow, which in nineteen <laughs> was a lot of money. Um, Five years ago, yeah, it was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah it was just a few years. Ago. <laughs> um, it was last summer. Okay, yeah. Right. I'm gonna stick with that. Yes, <laughs> uh, and that was that was a big deal for me because I was nervous. I'm like, do, do I really go out to LA? And I didn't even know if I was gonna go to New York. Okay. And give it a shot for, maybe not Broadway, but off. Off, off Broadway. Over on Eighth Avenue and Kel's Kitchen. Okay. Um, yes. I apparently had this, a friend of mine said he had a connection to the Fantastics, which oh, is wow. a show I had done before, yeah. and he said I think I can get you in on that, and blah blah blah. And I'm like, do I do it? And I'm like, I just don't want to be that singing waiter. In New oh, York, okay. Okay. You know? Yes. Got uh, it. And I just, I just thought my instinct was come to LA. I okay. think you're going to have a better time. And within two weeks, I was testing for a, a sitcom. Wow. Uh, called Step by Step, and it came. Yes, yeah, Step by Step. It came down to me and this guy named Sasha Mitchell yes. for um, one of the series regulars yes. called Cody. The guy lived in the van. He used to be on Dallas. That's right. We well, have Duffy. This is how. <laughs> it, normally, when you test for a pilot as an actor. Uh, you read at the network. Okay. They make the decision on the fly, like right on the spot. Oh, okay. okay. So the producers say, these are our top two choices, okay. maybe top three, uh, and then the network will make the decision. Um, normally that happens uh, within five minutes. Uh, this time, it took three days. Wow. And so for three days, I was, I guess there was a battle between... It was a very powerful producer uh, team named Miller Boyette. Oh yes, we know. Well, uh, we know they did a lot of stuff. Uh, Perfect Strangers, and you know that's, the whole uh, yes, you know TGIF. Yes, TGIF. Yes, yes. You know, and then going back to I think uh, <coughs> Happy Days. And, yes, not those. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the you know they were so powerful and so strong that they could probably tell the network you know we disagree yeah. it should be this and the network yeah. may have appeased them. I'm not sure who was fighting for who. Um, but I was told that it came down to lunchboxes and who would sell more lunchboxes. How oh, funny. <laughs> and, and I guess Sasha, as you said, he was a Calvin Klein model. He was yes. on Dallas. Yeah. Um, but that was week two in L.A. I'm a 21-year-old kid. That's good. You know, I'm looking like I'm 16 or something. I was just, yeah. didn't know what was happening. Yeah. I had one friend who, uh, who was uh, at a theater camp that I used to go to. Um, he was one of the uh, administrators, and he became a big casting director out here named Mark Sachs, who cast uh, a brilliant show called The Good Wife. Oh, there you go. Some little show that just ended. Yeah. Actually. It's a right, um, long run. And Mark said, I'm going to do you one favor. I'm going to get you one audition for my friend who's casting this show step by step, and you're on your own. And that was it. That was my one connection, my one break wow. to getting an audition, and that one audition went all the way to the top. So, you know, you could say, oh, well, bad luck. Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is... This this kid couldn't find uh, the studio at Sony. Sony's a big lot for those. It is a big guy. I've been there. That's a big, that's a big lot. He couldn't find the building. Uh, he's may have been a little um, slow. Well, and yeah, there were um, things with him that things were going on. Yes. Uh, and uh, and they came out. Uh, they came out to the room, to the waiting room. They said, David, if he's not here in five minutes, oh my God. the part's yours. Oh my God. And I'm like, okay, okay. What can we do? What can we do? Please God, please God, please God, please God, please God. 30 more seconds. Oh, my God. And he walks in and he goes, hey, what's up, guys? And and I just remember going, I can't lose to this guy, can I? And then I'm like, well, the character is a slow-witted yes. yeah. guy. The nephew or whatever, yeah. So, yeah. You know, and I kind of did a Vinny Barbarino type uh, thing. And I'm like, oh, yo, it's Cody and I live in the van and how you doing? Yeah. And he was like more just him. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. you know, they're like, "You're a much better actor," but he he is the, the part, yeah. and uh, and that's what happened. But but you know what? I mean, I I don't, I don't know the guy, so I have nothing yeah, good or bad to say yeah, about him, yeah. except that if he had just been one minute late, that's crazy. That's a I great would have story. had eight seasons and millions and millions. It went on forever. Eight seasons, I think. Yeah. God, when Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Summers as the leads, I mean, come on. And who would have thought that that was going to work? And I did. know. So that's yeah, Miller Boyette. And that's the thing about this. The thing about this business, as you know, I mean, who knows what's going to work? They throw things to the wall all the time, see what sticks, and you yeah. never know what's going to stick. It's so bizarre. I've had, you know, like like this show that I was telling you about, reality check with with Giovanni and Chloe Swank and all them. I thought this was the greatest thing I'd it ever. It should have worked, right? I, I'm like, this is a no. This for sure is going right, right. You know, and then you see other pilots, and I'm like, this is not going to go. Right. Um, 
and and then it goes. They last for five, six, seven years. Yeah, and it's just it's, just, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. like I said, I I came on to, I came to after Buzz TV. I came on as a part time fill in host. I was like every other Tuesday I was on or whatever, and that was it. Now I'm here full time. I mean, it's just it's just weird how things happen. That's fantastic. That's well, you're good at this. Happen. Thank you. Um, that's a great story. It's cra- I would I would have been just crapping in my pants. I almost cussed. Crapping in my pants though, <laughs> every second that would go by, going okay, please, 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 because you mean you're in LA and you want you want the job. Just like, oh my on. god, that's crazy. Um, so I mean, so do you really love television? Is that something that you I like? Love you like television acting because it's a different kind of acting than film and stuff. And even more so, I love the sitcom format, and I'm I'm almost sad that that they've all gone away from it. Full House is yeah. the only. Yeah. Uh, show it seems that wants to stick with the proven format from back in the 90s but the the feeling you get as a performer when you have a live audience especially when it's comedy mm-hmm. so you can feel the laughs you can you can um, time the next line that comes after the laughs when they're doing single camera which means they're shooting it like a movie yeah. um, you're not really thinking about audience laughing and stuff like that and holding for a laugher it's just not the same. <clears throat> you don't get that um, that immediate rush that you get in a in a live show. Um, so having a studio audience, having a rehearsal period is the other thing. So we would rehearse Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Got it. Shoot and we would Friday. tape shoot shoot on Friday in front yeah. of a live audience. Yeah. Uh, now it's you block and shoot. Yeah. And what that means is you show up to the set. Uh, you got your sides in your hand. The director mm-hmm. says, "Okay, cross here on this. Sitting on this." <clears throat> the cameras are timing their moves, and uh, let's shoot it. And th- like that clip you just saw, um, where I'm playing the guitar and I'm singing to DJ, um, I found a wonderful moment there where I realized that I was standing and singing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next lyric was, because I'm just sitting here. And so I had to go over to the couch and yeah. sit and got a laugh from the producers and everyone. I'm like, okay, let's keep that. You don't have the ability to discover things oh, without nice. a rehearsal process when right. you block and shoot. So it's really, it, it, you know, you can't be as funny. Yeah. You can't as those sitcoms where you had three, four days to rehearse yeah. before that live audience and work these bits out. We don't have the time. Folks, I now because I posted your picture on my social media and they're like, oh my god, it's him. And he's so cute still. <laughs> He's a good looking guy, folks, and he has talent. I'm looking at him going, he should be on a lead on some show right now. He should be. I'm, put, I'm putting it out there to the universe. We're working on it. Well, you, working you, on you look great. Well, oh, you, well you, thanks. You'd be, on, you'd be on television. I first. did, you know, I, I did a comedy pilot with uh, Martin Short's brother, Mike Short. He, okay. he wrote this thing with me. We're shopping it. Okay. Um, it's a half hour comedy, and, uh, and Mike is a great writer. He okay. wrote for Eugene Levy and John Candy and all those guys yeah. on SCTV. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wait, just a few TV. little, few little comedian guys. Yes. Um, so there's that, and because you you're know, Canadian too, aren't you? I am. So SCTV was a big deal, wasn't Huge. it? I mean, I, I mean, I knew about it from late night here in America. It would come on late night somewhere, but like you knew about it because uh, I think really anybody in the comedy world yeah. is an SCTV yeah. fan. It's really hard to believe that yeah. that someone could be in comedy and not watch the old SCTV right. clips. They're, they're it's like geniuses. Yeah, like the old SNL stuff. I yes. mean, it's just, yeah. you look at the cast with Belushi and oh, Dan yeah. Aykroyd and yeah. the, you know, Jane Curtin Eddie and all Murphy. Those, yeah, and Gilda Radner, all of them. Just all of them. Gilda Radner, she uh, was a great she talent. Was, she like, was a huge loss. You know? Very huge loss. I, I, when she died, I was very sad because she was so good. And her husband was also a great a talent and I don't think he ever recovered from so. from when she died. You know, so. So. And it's too bad because he was one of my favorites. Movies like Stir Crazy with... Richard well, Pryor. My favorite movie of all time is Willy Wonka and Tiger Factory. Oh, I mean, yeah. he, his, he, okay, here we go. It's about acting. His scene at the end when he yells at Charlie is heart wrenching, but he, and then he, when he, when he realizes he doesn't take the gobstopper, I'm like, if you've seen the movie by now, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, I should have seen it. And he gives it, and, he put, and then he turns, and he's like, you did it. And he's like, he's just like, but his acting in that movie is a great scene, actor. That's the thing. It was amazing. You know, because he, he's funny, but he always plays it real. Yes. Um, and you mentioned Richard Pryor. I mean, no person is a genius, but you mentioned their movies together, so they were just... You know, and the Frisco Kid, my oh, God. That, yes. I almost died laughing in that yes. movie with, with a very young uh, Harrison Ford. Yes, Harrison Ford, my other buddy. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, so I completely agree that, yeah. So, yeah. but you know, I, I've had a great time not being pigeonholed in my career, and, and it's, it's something that... I think could have been destroyed with a hit show in the 90s. Um, a lot of TV people um, had a hard time readjusting yeah. uh, 
from a personality that's so well known because back in those days we had so few channels. No internet, no internet. You know, no internet, and everybody watched these shows. Yeah. So, you know, to get 40 million people to watch your show was was not so crazy back then. Now it's impossible, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so people got really, uh, had a difficult time disassociating characters from those shows. Um, so that never happened to me. Yeah. Thanks for good news. <laughs> Didn't have that problem. Um, and it's given me the ability to play so many different types of characters that they normally don't want you to do. They want to find what your type is, and they want you to keep doing that. That's kind of the way this this career yeah. works. Um, so I was the sitcom guy, raped Tiffany Amber Thies, and in one movie, now I'm the killer rapist, serial yes. killer guy, and I, I did about it. 10 of those movies for a lifetime. <laughs> um, you know, and then it's like, how do I get out of that um, rut that I'm stuck in? I had to do some independent movies, you know, and take a, a cut and pay. Yes. And, um, and say, um, let's do it for the art. And I did a wonderful film called called Yard Sale, unfortunately, that's not released because oh. there's so many things that happen. There's nothing that goes on behind the scenes, folks. It comes to... A lawsuit things, between yes. uh, a guy who wrote a few lines and the oh. main writer about credit, and it's like they killed the movie. Um, so there's things like that. But but that was a great experience. And now Exodus to Shanghai, yes, I'm about that. Yeah. extremely excited about. A World War II films you co-wrote or wrote? I did not write this one. The, un, the Unwilling I wrote, which we'll no, talk okay. about in a sec. But okay. Exodus to Shanghai is uh, a movie that my friend Tony Hickox directed. Some of you may know that name from uh, Hellraiser. He oh, was yeah. uh, a director on Hellraiser 2, I think, 2 or 3. Okay. Okay. One of the, I think it was the biggest Hellraiser that okay. he directed. Um, and uh, and the Waxworks movies and a bunch of great yeah. horse stuff. So he called me up one day and he said, uh, I need you to come to Romania. Now, I had just spent a year plus in Romania. I had shot this oh. mini series for the History Channel called Sons of Liberty. Oh yeah, um, Sons of Liberty. I, I, I know that. Okay, that's where you're. Okay, I've seen. Okay. Yeah, yes. I was uh, the Merchant Amos. I had a big giant wig, yeah. and I, Viper made a comeback. Yes, hair wise. Hair wise. And uh, that was a four month shoot in in Bucharest, Romania, um, and that had followed another movie I had done, and another movie uh, before that. Okay. I did this movie called Dying of the Light with Nicolas Cage, and I did this uh, romantic comedy that premiered on the Up Network last year. Oh, wow. Called Love by Design, so it was like I got stuck in this city. Not it's a bad thing, it's by beautiful. the way. It's a beautiful old city. Amazing, yeah. ama- I'm so in love with Bucharest. It, you know, it's kind of like Paris and Italy, all kind of mixed into yeah. one. Good food, good wine, good people, um, amazing people, and uh, and I really kind of fell in love with the place. So it wasn't like I was suffering. No. However. It's over a year of my life now. Yeah. My, uh, my house, my dogs, my friends, yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, w- every time I went to the hotel lobby with my luggage and was ready to check out, uh, another producer would walk in going, David Lipper, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to the airport. No, you're not. We got a movie for you. Put your bags back. Oh, Can you so stay weird. for another two weeks? You know, and that's what happened Sons of Liberty. It was supposed to be two weeks and, and they ended up giving me a lead that was all three of the two hour oh, movies. Man. And four yeah. months later, yeah. I'm finally flying home for my cousin's wedding. And it's funny, the Steven Seagal movie rolled in, and they said, we got a part for you, it's uh, it's the lead. And I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> you <got it. laughs> Actually, first I said, how much? Yeah, oh, no, okay, no, I'm out of here. No, you did. You're yeah. like, waving, you're like, waving, okay. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go home. <laughs> uh, and I finally got it. So now, so Tony calls me, and he says, uh, you got to come to Romania. And I'm like, no. no. And again, I love Romania. Yeah. I'm like, I just got out of there. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't, you know, this is like six months later after I got yeah. back. Um, and... Uh, and I said, what's up? He's like, I need you to play a gay Nazi. All righty. I heard that before. And I'm like, okay. You know I'm Jewish, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but you got blue eyes, and you know, and you're very good, and, and, and I need you in this movie. I have a bunch of unknown actors, uh, first-timers that they cast. I walked yes. into this thing, and I don't know what I, what's going to happen. I'm doing a rewrite. Uh, I don't even know where it's going yet, yeah. but I need you to come here. I need you to coach the actors. And then play the game. That's Nazi. flattering. That's totally so, flattering. Uh, you know what? Um, uh, we've had the good fortune of working together uh, on another film called Federal Protection. Yeah. And I think right from that moment in, in early 2000, 2001, um, we, we had a respect for each other uh, that hasn't left. And like so we were, we were hoping to find another project together. Anyway, I flew down to, to book play rest. A, gay Nazi. I, I w- <laughs> a Jewish play, a gay Nazi. That, that's acting. I was I was the, the Nazi Kurt, <laughs> and, and and first of all, I, I'm not even kidding. I had to do this German accent, oh right? God. Now the other Nazi, so we were like 
the bumbling idiot Nazis. This is a comedy, by the way. It's an oh, comedy. action okay. comedy kung fu <laughs> Holocaust movie. And it sounds insane, and it worked. Like, okay. I, I mean, we had a, a screening at the Chinese theater, and, you know, 600 people or 700 people in the, in the it's theater. Just bust enough. Hysterical. Yeah. You know, and especially... Once I saw what I was dealing with, I said, I'm bringing all the comedy, baby. Do it. I'm going Do for it. it. Do it. You know, so like there's this opening scene where we go into this dungy after party um, and there's cocaine and there's strippers everywhere. Um, but back in the th- late 30s. 30s. Yeah. 30s, yeah. Okay. Um, a little cabaret-esque. And, uh, and I remember like one of the girls grabs me and I go, don't touch. <laughs> and then I see a group of boys and I go, Hello, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, you know, the first, that's one of the first uh, scenes in the movie, and right away the audience is like laughing and they're getting. Well, I, just, I want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah, so, so okay. this movie um, did extremely well at the Berlin Film Festival. Okay. Oh, and that's wow. the one place I was really scared because yeah, sure. the other guy's German, okay? The other Nazi that they cast was German. So I literally was sitting there with him saying, Say this line, let me hear it. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Say this line, let me hear it. Got it. Because I wanted to be as authentic, speaking English yeah. with a German accent as possible, and then the I'd also say some German words here and there, and I wanted to make sure those okay. were authentic. Yeah. So Marcus uh, von Lindgren, a very talented actor, um, was an amazing in this movie. Um, he helped me with that, and then so we're in Berlin, and I'm like, I'm going to get crucified. Right, like, like right. they're going to be like, he's not a German, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and the audience loved it. Oh, good. And they start coming up to me, and they're like, uh, so good. Uh, yeah. I'm they're like, like um, no sprechen the Deutsch. Yeah, nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. I faked it. It's <laughs> what I do. I'm an actor. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, we thought you were German. I'm like, no, that's, not a German. That's good, though. Yeah. We thought you were German. So, so, you know, so that was the first hurdle. Um, and, uh, and the movie, uh, I think, is sold. Um, very well. It will be out soon. Okay, good. I don't know where, how, or in what I'll keep, delivery I'll keep method, abreast. but... I'll keep abreast of it. I'll yes. It. Um, and it is going to Shanghai now for the Shanghai Film Festival, I oh, think good. next week, something oh, like that, a week or two. Okay. Um, so that movie's rocking and rolling. And as you mentioned, I wrote uh, a movie called The Unwilling. It's a horror movie that I'm extremely passionate about and excited about because uh, it's my first produced screenplay. I've written a few that have been yeah. optioned. But this is the first one that's actually been. Because you've been mixing recently, I think I've been watching you on your Facebook page. You've been there doing some stuff with it, haven't you? I have, and yes. we just finished our sound mix. Yes, uh, so I was a writer, producer, and, and of course the the lead actor in the movie, yeah. Dina Meyer, who um, I did Tony's movie Federal Protection <laughs> with. Um, she's an old friend, and I called her up. I said, "You got to do this movie," and she said, "Of course." Uh, Lance Henriksen came into. Oh, we love him. Um, Come on, talk about somebody. Great legend great cast. Jake Thomas, who is an artificial intelligence yeah. in Spielberg's movie, um, he has a great part in this. Robert Russler, uh, Brie Williamson, Austin High. Brie Williamson. Yeah, I love her from What Like to Live. That's she's, it. she's coming on to um, uh, General Hospital soon. But I, I love Brie Williamson. Oh, I didn't know that. She's yeah, going she, back into the she, show. She's okay. going to the show. She's cast as Claudette. So we're very excited. I she, love her as an actress. She's fantastic oh, in this. Great. Um, a formerly uh, nominated uh, Academy Award guy, Jonathan Heath directed it, okay. and the brilliant David Stump, who is um, an Oscar-winning uh, DP, director of photography, cinematographer. Look at you. Okay. Uh, he shot the movie and wow. did some effects, and this is the guy who did effects for X Men, X Men oh Two, Stargate. God. So, so we had this dream team yeah, that yeah. kind of said we're going to make this thing together and we're not going to have any studio or network or anybody tell us what to do, what not yeah. to do. We're going to make our movie the way we want to make it. Good and for you. I think we made something really special. I'll be excited when everybody else gets to see it. I hear to see that. I hear to see all your... I'm, I'm, I'm becoming your number one fan now. I hear to, <laughs> to see all your work. It's, it's, it's so exciting. I'll That's just great. keep sending you the new list. Just send, just keep saying it to me. Just keep saying it to me. I'll, yep. I'll, I'll take it. Um, you know, now, you also did a movie called Two Jacks that's coming out to you, or did it come oh, out? Oh, Two Jacks or? came came yeah. out. Um, that, uh, I had a small part in that, but it was um, directed by another brilliant guy named Bernard Rose, okay. who uh, I'm pretty sure was nominated for an Oscar for Immortal Beloved. The, oh, yeah. The oh, that, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a great movie. I haven't seen that one. That was a great movie. Um, and this was a very interesting movie. It was, um, you know, definitely an art movie. Okay. Definitely that kind of a yeah, film. Yeah. Um, Danny Houston. Oh, okay. And Jack Houston were both. Oh, wow. There. Yeah, okay. playing, playing, um, <laughs> you know, playing a family, which they are, which was right, which is pretty cool. cool when you have people who are related playing people who are related. <laughs> yes. uh, Sienna Miller, I believe, is in the oh, movie. Oh, Sienna Miller, okay. Yeah. Wow. And wow. my manager, um, 
Um, Julia Verdon uh, produced the movie as well. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's so exciting. There's some great stuff going on. Um, because we're coming towards the end of our interview. It's coming by too fast. I could talk to you like all day long. Wait, what? It's coming. Didn't we just... Oh, my God. I know. It's, it's just it's moving right along. It's time for my meatloaf. <laughs> what? That sounds good right now, actually. <laughs> I some love gravy meatloaf. Gravy I, I got to tell you, I love the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, next time we come, we come back on here again, I'll have some, like, some meatloaf for you and bring it on. We'll just eat it right here. I do, right here. yeah. Right here. Um, you are a franchisee of the Menchi <laughs> Frozen... I think it's so fascinating because I read an article about how you went into it and stuff, and you had one, and now you have two of them. But I mean, like, it's great. You're a, you're a business owner. I love yeah, that. Yeah, you know that like, there's those times in your life where you, you have these ideas, <laughs> yes. and you wish you could go back in time and <laughs> and tell yourself it's not a good idea yeah this was so much worse <laughs> I love it. um you know not to knock the the franchise but it was a very difficult experience for me um, well it's hard owning a business i own a business so it's hard it's hard you know i was naive getting into it on the level that i was going to have to run this thing versus what the franchise was going to do for me okay. um there is no uh secret to passive income when it's a business. You have right. to go down there. If somebody quits, who's gonna run the store? Right. You gotta go down there, you gotta open the register, you gotta mop the floor, clean the toilet. I mean, you know, and I'm a guy who came out of the musical theater production. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my- you have soft uh, hands. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, I, so they say. I had soft hands. <laughs> um, so so uh, it, was a, it was a really, really tough, um, Five years for me. I, I basically have sold all five of the stores that you I built. Have now. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, because I'm a little screwed in the head. And I said, why would I build one store when I could build five? And, so still, uh, that's still ambitious. I think that's kind of yeah. great, though. I mean, you did it. Go big or go home. Yes. Uh, yeah. So and, you did it, though. You did it. I did it, lost a whole lot of money, um, but and worked my butt off yeah. and uh, probably learned the education of an MBA. So, right you right. know, if I figure what business school cost if I went to Harvard right yeah it's not it's still a lot more but you know <laughs> but, it's a, but it's a great thing one of the things is it's a great thing because we everything's a lesson obviously as we know yeah. that and so now if, if you chose to do a business again or whatever now you know the do's and don'ts and you know and what that. I'm sticking to the business I know which yeah. is the entertainment business if I'm going to put my money into something it's going to be something related to the thing that I love which is my career I love this movie. I love, love, love the movie business. I love acting. I love the technique behind acting. I am, I am a real lover of technique and story structure. Um, so when I write, uh, that's really important to me, a well-structured script. And, and when I act, um, breaking down scripts, that's the fun part for me. Um, and the, for there are some actors out there who I've uh, had the good fortune of coaching um, and watching huge success like Barb Halley's doing unbelievably well now um, she's had a huge arc in uh, NCIS um, the LA one mm -hmm. and um, and going and she's got a new movie coming out she's just been absolutely killing it um, and I've had you know so many students <clears throat> over the years um, that I've gotten to crack so so I learned the process not only as an actor but actually by teaching yeah. you learn um, you learn more about yourself and exactly. you as an actor when you see what's going on with other people. So, you know, sometimes um, getting getting to a class, if I can um, give a little advice, if anyone cares for it, mm -hmm. um, tell them, tell you them. know, get into a class and yeah. just watch because when you see the the a good teacher um, teach technique and you see the effect it has on other people on that stage, then you can see how it all works. Um, and then it's not BS, or you can see what is and what isn't. Um, so, you know, I'm a blessed guy. I'm, I'm a super grateful, blessed guy. Um, yeah, the Menchies thing was hard, um, but it's just one little smidgen yeah. of my life. And it was didn't a little experience. Didn't kill me, almost. Yeah. But almost, <laughs> but, it, but it didn't. But didn't, no. But it didn't. Didn't at all, and, and look at what a nice little um, resurrection of my career has happened with all that pain. 
that I could draw from, <laughs> I've now become a much better actor. Yeah. And I, I, you know what? I'm joking, but I'm not. Yeah, it's, I get it. It's um, the more stuff we have as actors, at least the ones that use the same technique that I do, mm-hmm. the more personal pain, suffering, experience, life experience that we have, the better actors we become. I really don't know how I acted when I was a kid and I had nothing. How far? I don't know what I drew from or yeah, how, yeah, you yeah. know, I guess I didn't, I just did it. You just did it. You know, but now it's like when you see me in pain in, in, a, in a role, um, I'm probably thinking about um, some of my hard days that, that I've been through in recent years. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I didn't have those days, I wouldn't have that performance to, to share. And that's the best thing we can do as actors is, is show um, the audience, the people watching, um, who we are and what we've been through, through this material. I'm your new fan. I used to hear this to you all day long. I'm like, you come, you come up, you, in all seriousness, you come across very smart in terms of, like, you know, smart, like, smart, smart, like, oh my God, bro. But like, smart in the sense that you recognize something. It's like you, the through line through your life is you recognize something and you make the direction that you feel is the best direction for you. Not the one that goes this direction and you just fall yeah. apart. You feel like that's a through line in your life, it seems like, that you like, singer, actor, actor. Business, no business, no. Like you, still, like you make those decisions because you recognize this isn't working. You know, and that's that's really what we as actors have to do is you have to try everything to learn what works and what doesn't work. Um, and if you don't try it, you'll never know, and you'll never mm. discover something wonderful. Yeah. So I always want to be open to discovering something wonderful in my performances and yeah. in my life. I'm looking forward to your movies. I really want. I want to see them. I want to see them when they come out. So I have to keep my eyes peeled. Uh-huh. Um, Bruce Lee, that's the person's name, who's watching. Says, very good insight for show business and life. Thank you. My pleasure, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Lee. Bruce Lee. I like that. If that's your name, that's great. <laughs> Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Is that Bruce Lee? So, yeah, that's great. He's come back. He's, oh, my God. Wouldn't that be scary and wonderful at the same time? Yeah. My I, childhood would come back to me. I'm like, oh, my God, he's back. In I think I've seen... Uh, Bruce Lee movies about 500 times. It's same, well, same here. I mean, it's, you know, it's Enter that, the Dragon. It's that, it's, it's that living that time period. Um, we won't say what it is. Uh, when they used to show them all the time on TV. On, here in LA, it was Channel 9. You saw all these movies on Channel oh, yeah. 9. Oh, yeah. On Sunday, on Saturdays. I used to watch them all the time. It was great. Badly dubbed, but it was fine. I didn't care. Oh, yeah. Who cares? The, uh, the, the dubbing makes it. Yeah, Bad exactly. dubbing is the key. <laughs> so, my last kind of question for you. <clears throat> um, We'll be seeing you on Fuller House season two. It's a hit. The show's a hit. It's coming back. Are you is Vibe making an appearance? Can you say? As much as I would love to share, if I will or will not be on the show. Yes. Uh, I'm not allowed okay. to share. Okay. If I will or will not be on the no show. No It's just you and I. Not even Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, go away. I will. Up. I will say this. Yes. Their people called my people. Okay. Very good. That's Leave it. it. At that. That's all I can say. But to watch season two on Netflix, to just watch it and see if he shows up. We kind of we kind of great because I think DJ single right now on there. So, I you know what uh, I will say this you know Candace and I have have stayed in touch and Jody too. Have you stayed in um, touch with her too? Jody absolutely. Yeah, Jody was married to a very good friend of mine actually, oh, and funny. it's it's um it's it's too bad that they split she up. She makes jokes about that because she was on Dancing with the Stars and she makes jokes about her marriages. Like she was like, oh yeah, I was married a few times. Yeah. Yeah, she's had a few marriages. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, but Morty, her, her ex-husband's a great guy, yeah. an old friend of mine. Um, and they actually came to my Downey uh, Menchie's opening. Oh, how funny. Which was really nice. And they came to, I think they came to two openings. They oh, came wow. to my um, Whittier location yeah. opening, which I've sold. Yeah. Um, but um, That's fun. Downey, I'm still kind of sort of involved. I okay. still have like a piece of that. Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're good people. Uh, Candace is is an amazing person. She's a good mom. She's a, a good. She comes across that way. You know, we all kind of had our periods after Full House, where I think we, um, you know, did the Hollywood thing, went mm-hmm. out to the clubs mm-hmm. and partied it up. That's um, right, kids. That's and Candace right. just stayed grounded, got married, had a family, yeah. and They're still um, married too. It's still married, and, and the kids and, are almost grown. And the kids are growing up. They are. I see them. They're growing up and playing hockey. You know, she married yeah. a hockey player. The yeah. whole thing went down while I was doing the show with her. You know, she showed up to the to the set one day. And she's like, "David, you're the only one who's going to know who this oh, guy is." Yes, because I'm a huge hockey fan. Yes, you are. Coming from Canada, I played varsity hockey in college, yes. 
And and she's like, I, I, this is Valerie Bore, and he's the sweetest guy. And I'm like, Valerie Bore, he plays for the Kings. He's amazing. Yeah. His brother's Pavel Bore, the rocket, you know, the Russian rocket. And yeah. she's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm like, this is fantastic. Yeah. When's he coming to the set? Right, um, exactly, right, exactly. Uh, and then I was in Montreal uh, on another uh, movie, and I'm at the hockey game, and all of a sudden I hear David. Well, Candace, what are you doing here? And she's like, my husband plays for the Canadians now. That's so um, So, so we had a little bonding That's over great. that. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, big fan of hers. Uh, whether you're into religion, not into right, religion, right. I will say this: um, she stayed grounded. She stayed. Um, she stayed uh, with a family, and made good choices. Some of us made a little uh, not so good choices. Detours. Um, <laughs> And um, and I'm happy for her. And yeah. Jody, having gone the opposite direction, yeah. um, came back basically from death. Yeah, you know, I know. Yeah. To look at her now. So you know, regardless of the failed marriages, um, to see that dichotomy as the leading duo of the new mm -hmm. Fuller House is something special. You know, because you see you see somebody who who never varied, who yeah. never strayed, um, knew what was important and stuck with it. And then you saw someone go completely to the dark yeah. side and make it back, yeah. you know, which gives hope. There's yes. a lot of people out there wrestling with addiction. There are a lot of people um, who don't think there is hope and you can't come back. Yeah. And so I think Jody um, is inspiring in that way. And I think I the two of them together are inspiring. And that's probably one of the reasons why Fuller House is so yeah. successful. So, I agree. so I'm excited about it. And we're going to leave it at that. Um, tell the folks in there and that camera where they can actually find you on social media online. Can't find me at all. Uh, okay. At at Lip Dude on the Twitter. I'm still the Twitter. I like still Lip it. Dude. I like Lip Dude. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing when I came up with that one. And at David Lipper on Instagram. Yes. Uh, right. There is a Facebook fan page. There is. One. I guess there is one. that you can go on, um, and you can say hi. Say hi. Tweet. Yeah, we can tweet. Yes, you can tweet each other. And what do you call it when you Instagram? We can Instagram. We gram each other. I don't know. We gram. We can <laughs> gram. We can gram it up, yo. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. What the, I don't know what the kids are calling it. Just IG all the time. I'm on IG. I'm gonna IG you. That's what I was like. Are we yeah. OG, are we OGs then? Just on IG? such a uh, such a white Jew I over just, here. And, just, I, and I'm a big fan of yours now. I'm James Live Jr. It's another edition of Spotlight on AfterBuzz TV. Follow us on AfterBuzzTV.com, YouTube, iTunes. Share this. If you like him? Share this 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 broadcast with everybody you know who's a big fan. Some great stuff he said today. You can follow me at James Live Jr. all over the universe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.